What's up guys, your boy Rashad back again with another video and this is my spoiler review of Marvel's Black Panther. Let's get it. Now usually I do the spoiler talk with my brothers but we recorded it as soon as we got back from seeing Black Panther the first time so it was raw, it was fresh in our minds, we hadn't spoken a word to each other about the movie um, and this is what happens. Right, so not to look how okay. Uh -huh. What's really good people? It's your boy Jarrell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Sean does. <laughs> What's really good people? It's your boy Rashad and I'm gonna come to you today with some mad shows. What? Black Panther. What? Let's get into it, bro. What? Fucking hell. That's what I that's what you say. What? <laughs> oh, right, let's get into this fucking video then, guys. Oh, see, right, so what happens if I move quicker? If you see it starts to get blurry, just stop in it. Oh, dude. How far did you have to go? You have to give it a chance to focus. <laughs> they took away their powers for the ritual. Yeah, I get that also. Um, so it wasn't going to be super flashy. Yeah, but I wanted it to be more. I like, wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a uh, Scarlett Johansson level fucking combat, bro. Yeah, why? I wanted That's it to be. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be the raid yeah. level combat, bro. Because listen, bro, uh, that T'Challa is supposed to be a fucking oh, dummy. No, 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 listen, 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 no. Listen, 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 no. Nah, nah, it's because you're nitpicking. No, bro, no, listen, no, bro, listen, no, bro, listen, no, bro. Listen, no, bro. Listen, actually following yeah, him with a bang and that, like, do you know what I mean? He wasn't fighting on the same level that he was fighting Bucky. Nah, nah, because Bucky's stronger than them, man. No, yeah, bro. Bucky would have fucked up Killmonger, hundred percent, hundred. So. And in Civil War, he was going toe to toe with Bucky and winning sometimes. Yeah, bro. So, no, but then again, think about it. Remember, you can just disappear. No, but remember, <laughs> bear in mind, you're not at all, bro. You're not in the screen, bro. What are you doing? Of course, I can, bro. The sound don't travel with you, you know. Yeah, but bro, there's no microphone in here. It's in the vicinity. Bro, you know it's gonna be silent when you go. Oh, we'll see, innit? But anyway, yeah. So even still, fucking make me lose the fucking point. Bro, you all tell the room why you. Why don't yourself <laughs> you bastard yeah it, it was a mess i might actually put it up just because um if enough people want to see it but yeah i'm gonna do this video solo um let you know my spoilery thoughts and let's just get into the video man fuck like this I'm moving this shit back a bit sort that shit out I have the camera all up in my nose and shit. Right, so let's start off with the opening scene, yeah? That just set the whole thing for me, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, the scene between T'Chaka and his brother and Zuri, yes. <clears throat> I'm getting names right again. That scene was amazing. Um, it really set the tone for the whole movie. Um, watching it a second time, it, had, it gives it a lot more weight as well, like you had the feeling that T'Chaka was put in a bad situation and he made a very bad choice. Um, I would have liked to see his brother, I think his name was Unjobu. Please let me have got that right. You just get got the feeling that it was all downhill from there, to be honest. Um, fast forward to Wakanda. I want to talk about how much I love Wakanda. Um, in the trailers, I think it showed a little bit too much, but um, the first trailer I saw Black Panther and I saw Wakanda and stuff like that, I was like, what the fuck is this? This looks amazing. I want to go to the city. Watching the movie the first time, I was still amazed. Um, it was much more than I thought it would be. The technology was incredible. It was well done. Um, it was something that I would never have thought of as well with all like, the sand technology and the way that um, they can heal people. And stuff like that. I knew they were advanced, but this is like a different kind. Like I think they got a very comic book accurate as well, like to show how much of a superpower Wakanda actually is. I think the humor in this was well done as well. Um, when he says hi to Nakia, there was a lot of laughs in the cinema. Um, the fact that he knew, well, I realized that she kicked him 
a way to save that boy. And I was like, you, you, you just kicked Black Panther, bro. Are you insane? But you could just tell that she was obviously very determined and stuff like that. She had a good, she had a head screwed on. Um, and even her beliefs in taking care of the refugees and people that need it. Like, I do say Killmonger was right a lot, and I do hashtag that a lot just to take the piss. Um, but Nakia had the same idea. He, she just wasn't fueled by hatred, and she didn't want to go to war with everyone. She just wanted to help people out, which is what um, T'Challa ended up doing in the end. Um, so she was very relevant. Um, I think Lupita Nyong'o did an amazing job. Um, and I hope they don't try and do what the comics have done a make her into a villain because that'd be sad that'd be that'd be sad shuri was the comic relief in this literally i didn't know letitia wright was that funny or had that comedic timing but even when she said what are those even though the joke is a little bit late everyone in the cinema still laughed um the way that she was talking to t'challa her whole interaction with him was perfect. Like a brother, you can probably see that they were brother and sister. Even when he kicked um, the first suit, the sorry, the second suit, and she was just like, "Why did you just come into my lab and just kick everything?" And that was just hilarious. But yeah, props to her because I think she did an amazing job. And um, as I said before, the female cast in this was powerfully strong. Powerfully strong. Now let's talk villains. Claw, a lot of people are upset that Claw died in this movie. I wasn't necessarily upset, it was a shock, but I feel like he served his purpose, he did what he had to do, and that was to elevate Killmonger. Um, I wasn't as shocked as obviously when Snoke died in The Last Jedi, so I can't really complain about it because I didn't really mind Snoke dying, just the way it happened. But yeah man, I think he did enough, like the scene where he was robbing the uh, vibranium from the museum and he and he's like to the guard oh come here come here come here and then tells him he can go and it ends up shooting him in the back of the head he explains that he did it because making this crime scene a bit more spread out makes them look like amateurs which will make them harder to catch so you can see that he's intelligent and um, he makes the, the jokes that he makes are more making fun of the people that he's speaking to uh, like when he's talking about his mixtape and stuff like that with a hint of truth in it so he's kind of joker-esque in that way um, he got a bit childish when he was all like, oh, this is awesome, and stuff like that, which was a bit weird. But I could see that that's what his character was like. And he was very ruthless as well. So I think he served his purpose. He did what he did well. Andy Circus was amazing. So, yeah, man, Claw's death didn't bother me that much. Now, Killmonger. Killmonger, Killmonger, Killmonger. Eric Killmonger. The first time I watched it, I thought he was a very good villain. The second time I watched it, I thought he was one of the most relevant villains or relatable villains in the MCU. After watching it a third time, I can now say that Killmonger is my personal, the best villain in the MCU. He's better than Loki. Um, he's not as charismatic as Loki and he's not as funny as Loki, but in terms of how well he was written, his motivations, how relatable he is and the fact that in some ways he was actually right and he did change T'Challa like the best vi the best villains are villains that actually change your hero for the better and he changed him like he ended up doing the things that he wanted to do without all the violence involved and that sort of thing and the end scene when he died that was heartbreaking literally and his end quote oh I've got that written down I feel like getting that tattooed but wow. But you could see that they were both conflicted. Even T'Challa, like, he was even asking him if he should actually try and save him, sort of thing, like. And Killmonger, in his credit, he was just like, nah, don't save me. Bury me in the ocean like my ancestors who jumped off the ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Oh. When I saw that, I was like, elevated him elevated him and the fact that when he took out the knife himself like he accepted death he's like i'm ready to die he let out this last sigh and it was like everything that he was all the hate all the abandonment issues all the daddy issues all the radicalness all the rage that he felt for the outside world and what they've made him become is you could almost feel it just lift off him and that was amazing to see after he's there 
on the edge of a mountain watching the sunrise on the most beautiful place he never thought he would be able to see like it it spoke so much so much so michael b jordan well done well done he was a completely insane though like i'm not gonna lie he he had the wrong idea he had the right intentions no, he had the right idea, wrong intentions, because he just wanted to be powerful than everyone. He wanted to dominate everyone. Um, killing your oppressors and stuff like that would never be the answer for real change. And you could tell he was insane and he was actually evil because he, when he killed the Dora Milaje, that lady, he was smiling and shit. Like when he fought Okoye and that, he was all like, he was grinning teeth and he wanted, he loves battle. And you can tell that because of the scarring that he has, that he loves to battle, he loves to kill people. That's what he enjoys doing. There was a plot hole that I think was very, very big that after watching it three times, I was just like, what, why? And that was, what was the point in Killmonger and Claw's relationship? Like they stole the vibranium, he rescued him after he got captured. And then Killmonger killed Claw when he wouldn't want to take him to Wakanda. It's just like, what you, you weren't in it for the money. What was you in it for? I don't understand. To get his plane? And, like, it didn't really make sense. Also, that scene where he, just after he's beaten T'Challa and he's taken the heart-shaped herb and he's been buried, he's in his little dreamscape and he sees his dad and he's on the floor, he's looking for his dad's stuff. And his dad's like, what, no tears for me? And he's just like, everybody dies, just how it is around here. That was like... <sighs> and you could see it in his father, because his father had the tear. And he's like, look what I've created. I've created a monster. I've created a monster. But that was the kid's reality. And he just knew that he's going to have nothing but hardships after this. And he, I, I feel like he, in that moment, he regretted his decision to obviously betray... Wakanda because he would have loved his son to actually visit it or be accepted and he knew that that would never happen with what he did so that scene was extremely powerful I wish there were more like that I wish there was I wish there was a scene when um just after Killmonger got to Wakanda I wish there was a scene maybe like while he's imprisoned before he goes to see Chacha before he goes to see T'Challa and he's speaking to Wakabi I wish there was a scene like that where he speaks to Wakabi and tells him who he is and stuff like that. And that's when you actually see Wakabi properly turn. Um, I wish there was another scene between Wakabi and Okoye just to flesh out their relationship a little bit more. Maybe two scenes with them just to show that they actually care about each other and stuff like that. Um, and I wish there was a, a like that, if in that same like prison scene, I wish T'Challa had a conversation with Killmonger. Just one conversation, just before their fight. And it would have just rammed home that he lost because he was conflicted, not because he wasn't stronger than him or anything like that. He lost because he didn't want to fight him, basically. I think those scenes would have just elevated this movie a little bit more. Just That's what I meant by world building. Like, it just fleshes out the characters just a little bit and gives them some development that just takes the story so far. Now, this movie has made money. Now, I'm not talking about, like, okay, Marvel movies always make a lot of money. This movie has made, I think, up to now, about 700 million in its first two weekends. It's made more in its first two weeks than Justice League has made the whole entire time it was out. Just let that sink in for you. And I've seen pictures and memes and videos of little kids watching this movie, coming out of it being so awestruck that they have someone that they can relate to. Um, when I hear people or I see people commenting saying oh it doesn't matter representation doesn't matter and stuff like that. the fact that they're actually just so lost in their own brainwashing that it's, it, it's just sad I've had people that I've spoken to that are Marvel fans and I'm like are oh, you going to go watch Black Panther they are white and they're like Oh, do you know what? I might give that one a miss or nah, that's not really my thing. I'm thinking, what, what is not your thing culture? I, I don't understand. And it's just those simple things that they don't even notice themselves. They're just like, they look at it and they see the trailers and like, oh, that's not for me. But they don't understand what that means. And the little kids that are growing up today, they need to see black superheroes. They need to be able to relate to people like that. And it's not just about 
I've seen people say, oh, it's just a superhero movie and that. Ryan Coogler is the first black director to be ever given over 200 mil for a movie. And this is his third movie. Let that sink in. It was a whole black cast produced by black people about a black superhero in an African country. Just let it sink in. Like, I've seen people in America, like actual like politicians, there was a quote today, and I can't remember who said it, but one guy was like, oh, well, what about Catwoman? That, the Halle Berry Catwoman? Like, you had Halle Berry... What the fuck are you talking about? What are you actually talking about? Halle Berry? When was that? Like, ten years ago? And that was shit. The, the actual writer of the movie came back and said it was shit. And it had no cultural impact at all, behind the camera or in front of the camera. So... Stuff like that just saddens me, man, because you see it every day now. And as much as I didn't like the hype behind Black Panther, I understood what it meant for people. Anyways, those are my spoiler thoughts on Marvel's Black Panther. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you want me to release the raw footage of us just talking shit about it, I will do. So leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and as usual, I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Taylor about the fucking flex.